Hi there, my name is Oliver Page and I'm the co-founder of Nutcase. And today my idea is to kind of walk you through my entrepreneurial journey. I started my first startup while I was in high school. And um, at the time I was obsessed with Apple. I was an Apple nerd in, in high school growing up. And as any Apple nerd would, I needed to get my hands on the brand new iPad, which was one of, you know, at the time it was the hottest new gadget on the market. And um, I was able to convince my parents to have one uh, sent over from the United States because in Italy, which is where I'm based, everything comes out late. So the iPad was going to come out about three or four months after the release date it was, um, in the United States. And at the time that this was happening, um, the, this giant volcanic eruption was going on in Iceland. And the shipment of the iPad just made it through, but the case that I had ordered never, not, never got delivered. And that was probably the best thing that ever happened to me, even though I was a little upset at the time. Um, at the time, my, my high school was just talking in the, er it was in the early stages of t discussing a one-to-one uh, -one iPad deployment. But the funding wasn't there yet. The iPad was still too new. And it wasn't, it wasn't clear what the, what, the, um, what the end result was going to be using one of these devices. But I was an early adopter. I, I got this new iPad shipped over. And one day, as I was um, in the coffee bar at school using this new device, I, um, I was holding on to it. I was playing with it. And this kid came running into me, smashing me. And my iPad nearly went flying and uh, was, was almost severely damaged and I was traumatized by this experience. I was only like six, 17 at the time and you know, I knew that you know, because I hadn't gotten this case, I, my iPad was at risk and it was very uncomfortable to use. It was very slim, it was very um, slippery and, and that was kind of when I started thinking, you know, if the iPad case isn't even for sale in Italy, why, why, why wait? Why don't I just design one of my own products? Why don't I come up with my own solution to my problem? And the, you know, stemming from the, that first issue that I was experiencing, which was the iPad slipping from my hand, I started sketching a bunch of small designs for a sort of iPad case that eliminated the risk of it falling. And um, we ended up designing a, a case that had this, uh, this cross strap design on the back and solved it entirely. So rather than developing a case that was, let's say, shock absorbing that would protect the iPad if it fell, we decided to go right to the root of the problem, which was trying to find a way to eliminate the iPad falling altogether. And that was the first design, the first model for the iPad 1. And um, on my 18th birthday, we started, um, we started production. I got our first shipment of about 500 cases. Uh, I found my manufacturers on Alibaba. I don't know if you've heard of Alibaba, but it's a huge wholesale uh, manufacturer portal. And, um, and through there, I was able to you know, track down a couple different factories, get some, um, get some leads, and start sourcing my materials and whatnot. And this is, um, you know, this is actually one of our first clients. We were in New York City at the time, and um, we had just got a, got a small store to buy like 20 cases. And they were like, can you have, when can you have them delivered? And we were like, you know, we can get them delivered within, within an hour. Like, we're really efficient. And so my father and I, who was helping, you know, fund the project at the time, we, uh, we ran over to this coffee bar, packaged all our products in the, in the shop, and, um, and delivered them a couple hours later. So this was this is what the first product looked like. It was very, um, you know, it was it was a good first version. I was 17. It wasn't uh, it wasn't perfect, um, but it was it was really exciting. And you know, one of my one of my ambitions, one of my big goals in in, in life as a, as a as a young entrepreneur developing a case company was to sell it in the Apple Store. And um, you know, people told me that you know to get into the Apple Store you have to go through you know distribution. You have to go through corporate in California. And, um, you know, I was an aggressive, ambitious kid, and I just wanted to get in there as soon as possible. So rather than waiting, I just snuck into the Apple Store on Fifth Avenue in New York that Christmas and um, I started hustling cases by the case department inside the Apple Store as people were going around picking out their iPad case. And uh, eventually I did get uh, kicked out of the store, asked uh, never to return because I was soliciting. But it was a great experience, and it was one of the first kind of, um, you know, hurdles in my entrepreneurial journey. And it was a great experience. But this was like this was actually our first store, so not exactly as high end as you know the Apple Store on, on Fifth Avenue. But um, these guys are you know first customer. You got to start somewhere, right? So after um, developing the first version of the product for the iPad One, I uh, I decided after high school uh, to take a gap year and go to China and learn about the production process, understand the supply chain, you know, meet the factory that was actually developing our products for us. And, uh, and it was an amazing experience. I mean, as a, as, as a kid, I, you know, being able to see you know, inside the sausage factory to kind of understand 
what it's like to, to bring a product from you know conception to, to distribution and to, to, the, to the market was was really exciting and, and, and I learned a lot more than that. I, I, I learned a lot more from this experience than anything else, let's say. And so you know, it was a great experience. I traveled a lot and, and the factories that we, you know, we designed everything in Italy. That was where we're, our design team is based now. Um, but we, we sourced it all and manufactured in Guangzhou, which is one of the big manufacturing hubs in, in Southeast China. And so this was kind of one of my big mottos in life as well, is like you make your own luck if you, you know, if you hustle, if you're ambitious, if you're hardworking, you don't have to like wait around for things to fall out of the sky, you know, you can, you can work hard and, 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 and make your own luck, which is something that I've been living each day. And so as, um, as the years went by, we started transitioning our business also onto, an, of course, an online business. We, uh, we developed a website using Shopify, which is a... Um, a really great e-commerce platform that I would definitely recommend everyone checks out if they're if they're interested in getting into uh, online sales for for products and whatnot, and um, and we of course for, through our website we developed a social media channel as well. So utilizing uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter to reach out to customers, um, we found that actually Twitter was probably one of the most effective ways of of reaching our target customer, which was uh, which who are ICT coordinators. You know, we were able to, you know, de develop a whole brand selling into schools and international schools around the world, uh, specifically because of this, uh, this X-strap feature, this cross-strap that um, eliminated the risk of it falling. It was incredibly appealing to schools and, and faculty and to students because it, it solved that original problem that I experienced, you know, back in, back in the bar that day. And so, you know, using Twitter, we would be able to we would, we would tweet out to uh, to different IT instructors and and uh, decision makers and schools, giving them a free sample, having them try it, and it was a really effective strategy. And then last year in um, in uh, in the fall, I was invited to give a TED talk, uh, a TEDx talk in uh, in Rome, which is where one of our offices are based now, and that was a really great great chance to get exposure and visibility. And, and slowly but surely, over the years, what started off as you know, getting kicked out of Apple stores, you know, illegally selling products inside these inside of their stores, uh, and selling to small retailers. We eventually built out our brand and and became a you know, let's say a, a very um, you know a very powerful brand selling into schools. So we've built it up into um, a business that sells into 40 countries, um, five different continents. We have hundreds of schools that use our products now, and it's been a, it's been a really exciting journey. Um, we've also been able to, um, you know, build a brand in the direction of, of, of sales and corporate. So we not only sell to, uh, to schools, but also to big businesses like Unilever, um, Dannon. They've also used our products uh, for their sales reps, all thanks to that original cross-strap design that uh, eliminates the risk of the iPad falling from your hand. And so, you know, one of my, another one of my big takeaway points from what I've learned um, starting startups and, um, and embarking on this entrepreneurial journey is it's all about getting out of your comfort zone. You know, you don't really grow staying, you know, you can't grow within your comfort zone. And, you know, all those times that I got kicked out of Apple stores, all the times that I went out and did something crazy to get attention for my product or for my brand, that was really where, where the magic happened. And um, I really encourage everyone to, to really find what is, where are you comfortable right now? What can you do to get out of it to, to push yourselves and, um, and get some new experiences that way? And so, you know, I'd love to answer any questions on, um, you know, on what, it's, what it takes to like import, export, uh, manufacture a product, get a product to market. Um, it hasn't been easy. We've gone through numerous iterations of our of our of our design over the years, and um, and we we've come a long way. We you know you can find us at booth C44 as well C444 if you want to see some of our newer products. But um, thank you.